Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Today I'm tackling a video that's been requested numerous times since I started the channel, layering. Yes, we're talking about fragrance layering combinations, specifically 10 different combinations that you guys sent in. So on the community tab, I made a post and I asked you guys, what is your favorite layering combo? What is the best melding of two fragrances for you that you think just smells amazing? Something greater than the sum of its parts, two fragrances that come together like peanut butter and jelly. Because not always do fragrances work hand in hand and work harmoniously. Sometimes instead of peanut butter and jelly, it comes across like peanut butter and dirty sardines. Ugh. So I picked out 10 fragrance combinations that you guys gave to me on the post. And today we're gonna go over those and see how they smell. So shout out to everybody that made a submission. Let's jump into it. Let's check out some awesome layering combos. Now, in case for some reason you're unaware of what layering is, it's what it sounds like. Usually people will spray one fragrance and then spray another fragrance on top of it. So that's where you get layering. Some people like to take fragrances and mix them together in a separate container and have like a Frankensteinian fragrance that they spray on. And then other people will spray one fragrance on somewhere and then a different fragrance on somewhere else. So the two fragrances kind of meld together in the air. But all of those essentially are layering. Let's kick it off with our first layer. This one is courtesy of Flight and Gravity. Cool name. One time I layered CK1 with Ancre Noir and I basically ended up with something that smelled like Terridor Mez. I figured my layering skills had peaked right then and there and I haven't layered ever since. I actually really dig that. You just realize I, I, I did something here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit while I'm on top, yeah. So this one has two cheapy staples, Ancre Noir from Lalique and CK1 from Calvin Klein. And I did layer these together and found it did kind of smell like Terre d'Hermes actually. Now the CK1 does get swallowed up a lot by the Ancre Noir, which you would expect because Ancre Noir has a much bigger punch than CK1. CK1 pretty, pretty mellow. Just kind of a soapy, clean fragrance, not a huge amount of projection. Ancre Noir, more of a dark, rooty vetiver with cashmere. And what's strange here is when I layered them together, it almost came across like fresh and peppery in the opening, which doesn't make a ton of sense, and yet that's how it smelled, and that does tie it in with how Terre d'Hermes comes across. Like Terre d'Hermes with a less aggressive, dirty orange and more of a slight soapy, peppery citrus leading into Ancre Noir with that vetiver anchoring everything down. And so this combo, Ancre Noir and CK1, actually worked. Oh, and also guys, if you uh, are shopping ever at jomashop.com, make sure you layer in a combo of uh, the code GENTS8. GENTS8, save yourself $8 off any order over a hundred bucks. Tons of fragrances for good prices. jomashop.com, check it out. Next up, we've got Abdul who says, my favorite layering combo is YSL La Nuit de Lome with Le Mal Le Parfum. I normally go with five sprays of La Nuit and three sprays of Le Mal Le Parfum on top. So with this layering combo, we got the classic La Nuit de Lome and the very popular Le Mal Le Parfum. And this one does smell good, but off my skin, the La Nuit de Lome, even though it does have five sprays compared to two with Le Mal Le Parfum, actually gets swallowed up a little bit. Le Mal kind of comes in there and just whoop, comes right over top the La Nuit de Lome. I wish I got more cardamom from it. And yeah, there's cardamom in the Mollet Parfum, so there is some synergy here. But the way the cardamom comes across is different in La Nuit as compared to Le Mollet Parfum. So it does make sense that you'd go five sprays La Nuit and then three Le Mollet Parfum, trying to give La Nuit a little bit of a boost there. It's a combo I like, but for me personally, I probably would go La Nuit Blue Electrique and then Le Mollet Parfum with that one. See how that works out. Too bad La Nuit Blue Electrique is hard to find. Next up, we got Raul. Hey, Ash, wondering and hoping if you can cover layering Versace Pour Homme with YSLY Eau de Parfum. What's your thoughts on that? So here we've got two heavy hitters that are personal favorites of mine that I've worn a lot over the years, Versace Pour Homme and Y Eau de Parfum, both super versatile, easy to wear fragrances. Versace Pour Homme, a little bit similar to Chanel Allure Homme Sport, but more on the fresh side of things, a bit lighter. Y Eau de Parfum is gonna be that sweet, attention-grabbing, versatile, mega blue fragrance. 
So with these two, when you spray them on together, you end up getting essentially a freshened up version of Y Eau de Parfum. That's kind of how it comes across. You do have some really good synergy with this combination. The two fragrances work together well. There's nothing that clashes. It actually reminds me vaguely of something like Y Live. It's strange. It's like the freshened up Y Eau de Parfum with Versace Pour Homme in there. Almost starts to take it in a very slight Invictus path, <laughs> like an Invictus style of the two fragrances. Y Eau de Parfum does kind of swallow up Versace Pour Homme a little bit, but it works together really well and actually smells super pleasant. Again, a little bit similar to Y Live and how it came across to me, but it would work really well in summer if you were wanting to maybe take Y Eau de Parfum down a couple notches, you know, because it can be sweet and powerful and overwhelming in summertime. So if you maybe sprayed a little less Y Eau de Parfum, hit the Versace pour home with it, then it could work really well. Then we've got Winnie. Highly recommend Terre d'Hermes layered with Aventus. Smelled this combo on my husband and was blown away. Now with this one, we got some real heavy hitters. Creed Aventus, Terre d'Hermes. Oof, modern masculine masterpieces right here. And actually, it smells friggin' awesome. Like this was legitimately really, really good. Now I'm a big fan of Vetiver, big fan of Terre d'Hermes. I'm a fan of Aventus. I mean, most people are. What ended up happening was the woodiness, the birch and Aventus kind of melded with the Vetiver and Terre d'Hermes and made this very rich woody undertone. The opening was well balanced also, that kind of earthy orange and Terre d'Hermes mixing together with the pineapple-y bergamot opening of uh, Aventus. So you had a little freshness from Aventus here that helped counteract a little bit some of that dirtiness from Terre d'Hermes. It smelled ultra classy. This one worked really well for me. Then we've got Assad. For springtime, I do Versace the Dreamer and Masoni Wave. Dream combination, question mark. So a couple cheapies again, Versace the Dreamer, Masoni Wave. Masoni Wave actually a bit similar to Versace Pour Homme and Chanel Allure Homme Sport. So it's right in that style of fragrance. Versace the Dreamer though, very different, doing its own thing. Lavender and tobacco, kind of aromatic, really different. And the combination, a little bit like the Dreamer, is not gonna work for everybody. The Dreamer comes through much more strongly off my skin than Masoni Wave does, and it doesn't have as much synergy as something like Y Eau de Parfum and Versace Pour Homme, or Aventus and Terre d'Hermes. Instead, these notes are kind of fighting together a little bit, it makes an interesting combination. And if you're a fan of the Dreamer, you'll probably like it. But if you don't like the Dreamer, I don't think it's the type of combination that people are gonna freak out over and be like, wow, this changed my entire outlook on the fragrance. I do agree that that combo does come across more like a springtime fragrance. That aromatic feel of the Dreamer lightened up a little bit because of Masoni Wave kind of playing along behind it. It's the type of combo that grows on you and then you grow to love it kind of like the Dreamer is as a fragrance for a lot of people. But I think just off the bat, first time, a lot of people would probably smell that one and be iffy on it. Up next, Breakthrough again. Wanted by Night and Stronger With You. I just sprayed Wanted by Night first and then Stronger With You over it, but I feel like it should work in almost any way with even sprays. So with this one, we've got two false staples. Wanted by Night, Stronger With You. And hearing that combo, I was like, yeah, that makes sense, that should work and it does. It works big time. It's almost like it could be a flanker of The Most Wanted or something. I know The Most Wanted is a flanker that came after Wanted by Night, but this combination is almost like an evolution of The Most Wanted. Because of course you get the Wanted by Night in there, you get that additional spiciness that you don't get as much in The Most Wanted, but then you get that kind of toffee chestnut feel from Stronger With You, which is gonna tie it in with The Most Wanted. So I don't know if you'd think of this as an evolution of Wanted by Night or an evolution of Stronger With You, but either way, that's kind of how it comes across. Really sweet, very warm, great performance, really nice combo. This combo absolutely works together, smells great. Up next, we got Shane. I like layering Star Walker and Low DC Intense. I spray on the Low DC Intense, let that dry for a couple minutes, then put Star Walker on top, only overlapping a bit. I tried mixing them in a decant bottle once and it didn't give the same effect. Turns out mixing fragrances is harder than that. So this is a really interesting combination. Two fragrances you wouldn't think of as layering go-tos, Isimiyake, Low DC Intense, and then Mont Blanc Star Walker. And I'd say this combo, kind of like Missoni Wave and Versace Dreamer, not gonna be for everybody, but I think it actually works. 
you end up getting more of this dry papyrus kind of paper smell with a very light bit of uh, spice and then some freshness underneath it from Star Walker. The two fragrances here are not really on an even playing field. So you have uh, low DC intense coming through a bit stronger, Star Walker underneath it. But this one I think smells really pleasant. I like both the fragrances, so for me, this works. Maybe not as relaxing as Star Walker by itself, but I like the interesting combo here and it gives you something that you don't smell quite as often in fragrances nowadays. Up next, we got Fat Shady. I actually have two really great layers that you gotta try, man. Now for this video, I just did the first one, so we'll talk about that. Now when I layer my technique, I spray them on top of each other and it usually works great. First layer is Encre Noir and then the second Dunhill Icon. The notes between the two complement each other beautifully and end up creating something really special. And this is something I found that's very interesting. The fragrance that I found that was mentioned the most often as one that's used for layering is Encre Noir. More people listed Encre Noir in their layering combo than any other scent. The reason I find that interesting is because when I did a video asking you guys, what's a hype beast fragrance that you hate, Encre Noir was on there more than almost any other fragrance. So Encre Noir is both one of the best layering fragrances ever. And according to you also one of the uh, worst hype beast fragrances ever. So here again, Encre Noir, Dunhill Icon, that's the matchup, that's the layering combo, and they do work together pretty well which you would expect. I mean, if you put Encre Noir with Terre d'Hermes, you would expect that to work pretty well. Not that Terre d'Hermes is icon, but you know, fragrances that are kind of in that style, you would expect them to work pretty well with the fragrance like Encre Noir with that vetiver base. So this one does ramp icon up a bit, makes it a little bit darker, gives it a little bit more of a mature vibe, maybe a slightly more mysterious vibe than just by itself. So I'd say this is like taking icon and making it into a fall fragrance, fall icon or something. I do like icon a whole lot. I think for the price, it's an amazing quality fragrance, just like Encre Noir, same deal with that one. Great quality, great price. And these two work together very well. As I've talked about a number of times, it's got good synergy. Then we've got a submission from Il Defonso who says, Aoud Lemon Mint with Prada Lunarosa Ocean. Adding that nice Prada Iris I love so much just adds a little extra overall. I don't know, I know, I really enjoy it. So we've got Mancera Aoud Lemon Mint, big high beast fragrance, big compliment puller, quite unique as well. And then Lunarosa Ocean, the new blue fragrance from Prada. This is one I wouldn't have immediately thought of myself, but it works. Both fragrances kind of take from each other. Like you mentioned, the iris in there adds a nice facet to Aoud Lemon Mint. And the Prada here is kind of working alongside the Mancera. It's not quite as strong as the Mancera, but it supports Aoud Lemon Mint really well. So you get a little additional freshness from the Prada in the opening, which helps temper some of the sweetness from the Mancera. Then as it dries down, that clean iris adds a little something something to the Mancera. It does take on a touch of almost a powdery feel as it dries down, but it's not overwhelming and it smells good the whole way through. And last but not least, Spaztec Warrior. That's a cool name too. I've only layered a few, and when I do, I make sure that the two fragrances not only share a note or two, like tobacco, cocoa, or citrus, for example, but that those shared notes are standouts in each fragrance that they come from. I'll also layer weaker performing fragrances like the one Eau de Parfum over a base of Molecule One. So this kind of gets at what I've been talking about, the idea of having fragrances that work synergistically together. Yes, there will absolutely be some fragrances that you can layer together. And even though they're completely different from two different worlds, two different styles, they work together very well, that can happen. But more often than not, the best smelling, most cohesive layers seem to be from fragrances that work together that share a common idea and maybe one fragrance can fill in the gaps on another. So with this combo, Molecule 01 and the one Eau de Parfum, it's your standard go-to kind of beginner layer. The idea with Molecule 1 that people have basically pushed forever is that you add this and it helps extend the life of a weak fragrance. Molecule 01, if you can pick it up, some people say they can't, but if you can pick it up, has a light cedar scent profile. So hypothetically, it shouldn't interfere too much with the fragrance that you're spraying on. And a lot of times should actually help complement it with just that, that kind of effervescent cedar scent. And of course the one Eau de Parfum or the one Eau de Toilette both, 
long heralded as an amazing smelling fragrance where the only drawback is the performance. Truthfully though, for me, the One Eau de Parfum, the performance doesn't really bother me. But I wanted to bring that up because he makes a good point about the layering, how that works, and also Molecule 01. So there we go, guys, some of your best layering combinations. And in the future, we'll do another one of these and tackle some new combos. I wanna thank you guys for hanging with me. Let me know in the comments some of your favorite layering combinations that we didn't talk about here today. And also give these a try if you can. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.